thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited to give this author talk. Today I'll be talking about the tips and tricks of writing a book about you, with you as the uh, main character. And this is super fun because it means you really get to delve into all the fun and quirky things that make you, you. And most importantly, it talks about your background. And so if you feel that your voice or people like you aren't being seen in books, it's your chance to be able to do, um, make yourself into a character that can be seen and heard. So it's super fun and I'm really excited to talk about um, how I've done this in my own book, Hooder and Me, and I'll get to that. Um, but first off, I want to say that it can be really cool to be from the western suburbs of Melbourne, like I am, and there's a lot of um, uniqueness and heaps of backgrounds, lots of colour, different people, different nationalities. And I find it really wonderful to live here and work in the western suburbs. At times though it can be challenging when you're, like I said, looking for a book to read and you can't see characters that represent you. Um, and I think that's super important. So that's why I want your voice on the page so that we can read about you and your background and people just like you. So I could talk about um, my process of writing for the whole talk but I really want this to be about you. I will be relating it back to the book that I wrote though, Hood and Me, because it's all, all the tips and tricks that I'll be telling you about today I've used when I wrote um, this story and I think that um, it just shows it's, it's real, it works and you can do um, a similar, you can use a similar formula that I used when I wrote this story. I'll tell you a little bit about why I wrote Hooder and Me. I think the number one reason was um, I really enjoyed my, um, my childhood and I really enjoyed growing up with my siblings and I feel like the thing that I know best, um, my siblings and our life and our background and how we grew up, it was a really fun time and there were many fun things happening. So I really wanted to get those stories down on paper. But through that was the story of our culture, which is Lebanese and our religion being Muslim. And of course, if I'm going to write a genuine story, I can't skip over those bits. They're so important. And that's why our own voices um, is super special because it's not just a story about um, uh, an adventure. It's a story about real people and real kids. And a lot of people have written to me and said that they really relate to that because they can see characters like them and that's really helpful because it helps kids um, pick up a book and be like hey this this I can link with this I understand what these characters are doing I understand what that process is or why they're talking like that or why they're acting like that so let's get straight into it using yourself as a character the reason it's so cool to use yourself as a character is because one of the things that writers say all the time is write what you know. Writing what you know means writing, you don't you don't write about, I don't know anything about maths or science, well I'm not very good at those subjects, but I wouldn't write a book about the solar system or things that I have, I don't understand. So that's why writers always say that, that catchphrase, write what you know, and what you know best is you. So if you're interested in writing a story about you, this is perfect because you can really delve into what makes you, you. It's really fun to do this because you get to pick up on your own quirks, um, the fun things about you, your relationships with other people, and something really important is the emotions and the feelings that you can tap into knowing that you're writing about yourself. You can't make those feelings up. So when you think back on something that's affected you or how you felt, sad, angry, hurt, happy, joyous, stressed, shocked, you know how that feels. You can describe it so perfectly because it's within you. It's not something that you're just imagining. It's there. But of course there are always flavours and um, other bits that you can add to it. The other really important thing is it means it gets to tap into your background. Like I said, being diverse um, in the western suburbs is a wonderful thing and we need those voices out there. So the background that you have, nobody else has. The upbringing that you've had, nobody else has. The relationships you have with others, nobody else has. We want to hear those stories. So if you have um, some funny things that have happened to you or an interesting plot that you can put yourself into, we want to hear it. I would love for you to write that story because we're dying to hear those stories. The other reason to write a book about yourself and your background is because in 2020 there was a study done in WA that said only 18% of books 
um, in child cares had a character that wasn't white or from a middle class background and that's um, that's a really low number considering how many different kinds of kids there are how many immigrants they come that come to this country there are Lebanese kids there are Chinese kids there are Indonesian kids there are kids from all over Africa everywhere in Australia we need books that represent you guys so we've talked about the reasons why it's really cool to use yourself as a character. Now we're going to talk about what people say about using yourself as a character, but it's not always the best thing. The reason people say that, um, a lot of people say that it's not good to use yourself as a character is because sometimes you don't want people to know about the weaknesses that you have or the less nice bits about yourself sometimes the flaws that you have we all have them so if you're going to write a story about yourself you really need to embrace all those parts of you that aren't perfect now we all have them and something that um, my main character Huda had in her story was that she um, well I was not very clever growing up I would not do very well in my spelling tests I was not very um, academic, I hated homework, I really, really struggled to read until probably late primary school and that was really hard for me. So instead of shying away from that, that's part of me, I've embraced it so that everyone can see that hey it's okay to struggle sometimes if you're weak in another area, it doesn't mean that you're, you're weak in all areas, but it's just being human. So you need to be really honest with yourself. You need to be able to talk about the bits or, you know, touch on the parts of yourself that aren't so great sometimes. But you can always turn them into comedy. You can turn, can turn them into a funny situation. But all characters, any character written, has good bits and not so good, good bits. They have, every human is like that. So you have to make it real. In writing, they have this um, this character term called Mary Sue or Guy Stu. And what that means is that these characters are written and they just are perfect. And they just come along and every time they're in a story, they save the day. Now, the name might not always be Mary Sue or, or, or Guy Stu, but it just shows that a character written who has no flaws and is always perfect isn't very relatable or believable. So if someone picks up a book and they see a character who's really perfect, um, she's gorgeous, she's very clever, she has, she's really popular, she's got a lot of friends and all of that, um, people just say, oh, this is a Mary Sue character, this is not believable, this is not relatable. So we want to avoid that. You have to have the good and the not so good within your story. And that means you need to dig deep and figure out what the best parts of you are and what are those quirky things that you can work into your story so it's believable. So what I did with Huda and me was I used myself, Huda, as a character. And I used her um, as, she's nine years old in the story. And I really went back in time and thought of myself when I was nine years old. And I had to think about how I spoke, what I did, the kinds of things that I liked and um, the relationships I had with the people around me. My brothers and sisters, my mum and dad, my teachers, my friends and even the people that I didn't get along with. So using this I was able to create the character of Huda um, into something really great, something really special but I will say that it wasn't all truth and that's okay it's okay to add layers and that's fiction that's what we're doing it's all right to add exaggeration bits of you that don't exist because the character doesn't always have to be you it's built on you so you can use yourself as the bones and then build on that and that's what good writing is creating something creating and building on something that an idea and so you can use yourself as the seed and then just keep watering it add bits to it. So for example, Huda in the story is very confident, very brave, very outspoken. I was a lot like Huda in the story, but I didn't, wasn't that confident and I wasn't that brave. And I didn't speak to adults the way that she speaks to. I would never have done that. But for the story, it was good to include. Okay, so let's talk about point of view now. So with point of view, it can be really tricky to find the right one that suits the story that you want to tell. And it's really important to get the right point of view so that your character shines. In Order and Me, I used the point of view of my brother. I found it was easier to do this to look back at Huda 
Rather than look through her eyes, it was easy to describe her from my brother's perspective. And when I speak to my brother these days, he still tells me about all the funny things I did or how I used to act or what I used to look like. And so I'm looking through his eyes. I'm looking through his lens. Because if I was looking at Huda um, through her own lens, it would be really hard for me to say, oh, her chubby cheeks and her dimples and, um, and then she did this funny thing. But it's so easy to do it through her brother's point of view. So when you're writing, you need to find the point of view that suits your character best. So is it first person? Is it through the character's eyes, the main character's eyes, which is you? Or is it through someone else's eyes? Or is it through somebody's eyes that is not even one of the characters? You can decide this, but the way to choose it is to think about what makes your story glimmer. What makes it really stand out? What makes the characters burst off the page. That's the point of view that you want to use. So play around with it. So something that I think is really important is to be really honest with your work and your writing. Um, it can be hard to write difficult situations, but when difficult situations happen, it's really good to think about them and understand why they happen and how you can work them into your story. A situation that happens with Huda is when um, she decides to put the scarf on, she decides to wear a hijab. She doesn't wear it all the time, but she decides at that point in the story that she wants to wear it, um, and so she does. Anyway, she's really happy, she's really proud of herself, and then she meets someone who doesn't like it and says some nasty words to her and actually tries to take it off her head. Now, the reason I wrote that and included that in the story, as hard as it was, was because it's really important to be honest with your reader about some of the things that happen in life that aren't so pretty. Because life isn't always rainbows and it's not always so, so wonderful and sparkly. At times there are hard things that happen and you want to be able to help the reader through those so that they know that it's not, the, it's not only them that it might happen to and that it also means that your character is really, really, really realistic and honest. So in every story there's got to be a problem, there's got to be some kind of conflict um, and I really like villains. Villains are really fun to write and the best thing about drawing on your own experiences is that you get to think back on the people who you found have been not so nice to you. Maybe it's a main teacher, maybe it's someone who served you at a checkout and was not very friendly once, maybe it's your next door neighbour who doesn't like the balls that go over her fence. It can be anyone. But the key is, and I will say this, that when you're writing a villain or someone who you don't have very good feelings towards, it's best not to use their name and it's best to kind of, you know, build on that. Build on that character. Don't just use them as they are. So let me explain to you what I mean. So in A Hood and Me, there's a aunt who comes and stays with them to babysit. Now, the aunt um, is based on two people in my real life. She's based on someone who really did come to stay with us when we were little kids and she would make us clean and make our beds and put our dishes in the sink. And we thought she was horrible, but really she was just, you know, getting us to be responsible. Um, so I used her to create, so that aunt, uh, to create the the kind of the situation. But then there was someone that I met who would give me a really hard time. This was when I'm a, when I was a bit older as an adult. She gave me a really hard time, this this person, and she was not very friendly and she was really demanding and she she would kind of make me upset at times because she was just so unreasonable. So then I draw on those feelings of that person. So I combined them. I was able to use the feelings that I got from one of them and the situation from another to create this crazy character, this n absolutely fictional character and I didn't use any real names and it was just more the feeling that I got when I thought of these people. So we've spoken about the characters and how to create them. Now let's think about the plot. Now it always does link back to the character because you need to figure out what the problem is and what is driving you, you as the character. What is the why? Think about what do you want in the story? What is the purpose? Why are they doing these things? Why are they pursuing it? Or why are they trying to get out of it? Why? Think about that in every step of your writing fulfill that why. It has to lead to a point so that the thing that your character wants leads to the end point. Another really important aspect of writing a book is show 
don't tell. Now what that means is that you're going to describe a situation rather than just tell the reader what happened. So for example, if a character is um, not very happy in the story, if they're sad, you don't have to just say that they're sad, uh, Huda was sad, you could say something like, the tears trickled down her cheeks. You could describe her lips, you could say her lips turned downwards. She wiped her face. You could say these kinds of words to describe her sadness, maybe how her eyes looked. Sometimes when I'm writing I find I start to act like the characters to see if it works. Is that something that I would do if I'm feeling like that or if the character was feeling like that? If I was laughing, how would I laugh in the story? Maybe I would snort and I would describe that. So always describe how the character is feeling or what they are doing, not just say that they did this, this, this and that. The description is so important so that the reader can imagine what your characters are doing. I'm going to read you this quote and then I'll talk about it for a second. This is a, a quote by Jacqueline Woodson and she's a, um, a children's author overseas. So the quote is, the more specific we are, the more universal something can become. Life is in the details. If you generalize, it doesn't resonate. The specificity of it is what resonates. Now those are really big words but what it really means is that when you're really specific in describing something people will relate to it better. Now what this it means that the more that you describe it and the more specific you are about that thing the more people are going to be like ah oh, that reminds me of how I know this thing to be. I'll give you an example. If I was going to write about my dad's hands, now my dad's hands are very similar to mine actually. They're really tanned and they're a little bit veiny at times and he's got little bits of hair on them around the knuckles and he's got these little weird wrinkles on his hands as well. Um, and he's got little wrists, they're a little bit bony. Um, and if I was going to describe my dad's hands, it's not going to be like your dad's hands. Maybe your dad's hands are quite wide and maybe his fingers are really long. But the greater detail I give to describe how my dad's hands look is going to immediately make you think of your dad's hands and then you will be able to relate to the story. So the more specific means the more universal and more, the more people that will relate to it. Another thing that you'd like to consider in your story is if you want to include twists and turns. Now I really like doing this and I did it in Huda and Me. The story isn't cut, it isn't cut out like it seems it is. There's something else happening that unveil, unveils itself towards the end. So if you want to use this little tip or trick, it's really cool to use because it surprises the audience and kind of gets them thinking, oh my god, is that what was happening when that was happening? I'll give you a little example. So what Akil is outside and he's um, doing another chore and it begins to rain and there are flashes of light. Akil assumes that those flashes of light are lightning because it's raining. But later on it emerges that someone was actually taking pictures of him and it was the flash of the camera. And so that is one little thing that surprises the audience and makes them think, oh my God, is that what happened? And then it leads to a greater point. So using a twist is really fun. Some of my favorite authors have used um, these twists like Paul Jennings. I love his twists. And if you've seen the series of Round the Twist, that's based on his um, his stories of Round the Twist, his books. And he's always, he's the master of it. So if you, if you really want to get some inspiration about twists and how to write them, look up Paul Jennings and read some of his work. It's awesome stuff. Thanks so much for joining me today everyone. I've really had a great time sharing my tips and tricks um, and I hope that you'll find use for them and you can create some awesome characters based on you and your background. Feel free to explore, have fun, be authentic, be you. Remember, enjoy exploring your character, enjoy exploring you and your background and all the things that make you special. Thanks again. One of the most fun things that I enjoy doing is writing dialogue. I think dialogue is a really cool way to kind of get the real voices out of the characters out there. And I found it really fun to do in Huda and Me because it meant that I could have a pretend conversation with um, myself and my brother at age 9 and 12. And I really love that. So let me um, 
reggy a little bit of dialogue. So remember, it's written from Akil's point of view, the brother. I glare at Huda. Two cakes and a colouring pack coming right up, Martin says before heading down the aisle. You can't just go around demanding things like that, Huda, I say. I wasn't demanding. He asked if I wanted anything. You need to relax, brother. Relax? We're almost just sent to a kid's prison for the rest of our lives. Martin brings us our drinks and Huda's colouring pack and we fall silent until he leaves again. I don't know how mum and dad agreed to let us go on this plane when that woman called them. I hiss when it's safe to talk again. It wasn't mum and dad on the phone, says Huda casually as she takes a sip of coke. I pause for a moment. What do you mean it wasn't mum and dad? It wasn't them, she says, taking another sip. Huda, for heaven's sake, what are you on about? I gave him Mr Kostiki's number when I booked online. He asked for parent or garden details, so I typed in his address and phone number. I'm guessing she means guardian. You don't really think I'd give him mum and dad's number, do you? Even a child wouldn't do that. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. And Mr Kostiki went along with it. When the airline rang him out of the blue, put a recline to her seat. Mr Kostiki has a lot of faith in me, Kill. You really need to take a chill pill. She taps her watch. And look, no one else will realise we're missing until after school in another five or six hours. And we'll be out of Australia by then. So just calm down and don't give us away before the plane takes off, okay? As much as I hate to admit it, she's right. So I really love writing things like that. It's just really fun to get dialogue, get the point. And the best thing about it, it keeps the story moving. It unravels things. So it's super exciting.